Ooh, just got a 30 minute game on. Start the new year. <laughs> I think from all the evaluation that I have done, we've hit those three key points and just really want to just keep those now as part of the full mantra, the full answer to chess process that we're working on. So we shouldn't have to mention them anymore now, they're in there within our system as best possible. And as always, it doesn't guarantee a win, it just hopefully kind of improves my game a little bit. I'm trying not to make blunderous situations. Let's castle. But then there's the overthinking aspect as well, so I don't want to overthink. So by now, really, at this stage of the game, the move should be half decent, shouldn't they? I should know most of the patterns type thing. It all bases on what the opponent actually does. Because you can play all the moves you want and you get familiar with, with certain lines, but if the opponent doesn't do what, say, you're familiar with and you, you love practicing that way, then suddenly they just do something slightly different. It changes the whole ball game. So that's why we have to really focus on using the answer process. Answer process is looking at key spaces, looking at weak pieces, could simplify and just capture, could bring the bishop into the game. There's no worries there because they're probably just looking to take the bishop here could also x-ray through to their queen as well but I'm just going to bring my bishop here because I do like this position and it's not unfamiliar to me black can win out in this type of situation because white usually gets a little bit greedy because they've advanced the knight they think right I'm in there but little do they know that they kind of lose tempo when they start dropping this here start bringing the bishop through attacking the knight there's slow tempo moves that doesn't really improve their position because the piece is yeah like we said he's always going to be grabbing so we're going to just grab here potentially the bishop taking now so he's simplified it so all the things that i was talking about there were the losses of tempo um they appear to be aware of that at this moment and to me, that is a loss in tempo already by doing this particular move. But I have to prove that to myself. I, these are my rationales. I mean, I could come. Oops. I could come here with the knight, attacking his knight. His knight takes pawn takes. Gives him a little bit of a movement with this pawn. I could let him take because I'm not bothered about doubling the pawns on this situation either could move the knight out of the way but what is it realistically doing it's just going to get challenged isn't it so there's no point could move it back but again that's not too good because my links are already rooks are already nicely linked up could bring the bishop back again i mean that's an okay-ish move it's just it's sort of going backwards negating the whole idea of what we're trying to do i do like doing these and i think it's frowned upon you know with the engine because the knight takes and the pawn takes and I basically in essence sort of doubled my own pawns up here um, but I do like doing this pawn push up here to support the pawn feels nice I think I have to stick with what I like doing so I'm going to go with this and then capture and then potentially pushing here so let's grab here and then pushing the pawn here It's a weird sort of positional play thing. I do like it. I think it, it does work. It seems to unsettle white structure of these nice little straight pawns here. 
and yeah he's trying to make his line of pawns strong but that's not the case we can go here first attacking the bishop bishop's just going to drop back and then just push the pawn up here a little bit okay so let's just do that for now he might continue with his own attack here on our bishop he's not doing that could continue attacking and then at least he doubles his pawns up with his bishop so we could attack let's just keep that momentum going for now so the bishops come through we can take now doubles the pawns so we've not to be overconfident in this and we did say we're just going to simply bring this pawn here to support this pawn and i think then they're going to try and do some sort of disheveling around the king area it's potentially going to be looking for the chibi bringing the queen here coming across here as we know so he's making space now for his bishop to come around and the queen to come here so we know all this yeah, so the queen's looking to traverse or the rook is looking to traverse to either get to this point so that the bishop can do the cheaper here so that's their plan that's the strongest plan that we can see that they can do what's our strongest plan could attack this pawn here yep yeah, so we could push up just remember pawns can't come back again so we could attack and it seems like a nice attack you know it's attacking the second second head of the snake if he comes and support it we can still take he takes back again but are we going to be fast enough because we we do know that we're looking to come towards the king area i'm actually going to go for that it's giving them something to think about we're attacking something i mean if he drops down then the queen can take the pawn so in essence i think he's either going to be clever by bringing the queen here because he wants to get to this square doesn't he to come here to get the cheapy so that's potentially what they're going to do so if the queen sits here i need to be stopping doing those things really <laughs> might start flicking on something wrong so if the queen comes here we can still take it's not disturbing the equilibrium of our position we can still take no matter what comes here we're aware of the cheapy that's coming in don't want the cheapy to get in sometimes it does happen even though you're aware of it yeah so it's come with the rook so i'm going to take like i said whatever came we were going to take because we're disheveling so the knight could take but then the rook has got the x-ray through so if the knight takes queen's probably going to come here then we can bring the rook so if let's just do the picture knight takes the rook's not going to take he's going to want more people in the army so the queen will come here we can then bring our rook here so if the queen did take we take his queen if his rook took the queen then our rook takes so we're winning out so i think i'm going to chance that i can't see any other patterns that they might have don't really like babysitting this so the queen is there so we'll come here like we said he's moved there dead quick but again he's potentially looking for this square for the cheapy he does have this loose pawn here as well got to be mindful of that oh the rook's down he's coming for a pawn do we have any checks on his king? Dark square we're on as well. Can't, can't really move. The, um, can I protect my knight? I could swing over here to protect the knight, but then he's just going to drop the pawn here. Or even block with his bishop. He attacks my queen. Yeah, so if I move my queen here, da, 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 hmm. there's something. There's something. If I come here and I attack his queen, see his rook comes down and attacks our queen. We take with a check on his king. 
and we would win the rook so there's going to be something that they can do to interject there isn't there so we attack his queen his bishop takes our knight we take his bishop his rook takes our rook rook takes his rook and then his rook is actually home and dry with all these hmm do we win out? we don't win out there do we at all we lose the pawn so we could push this pawn up let's push this pawn up I think I might get a bit of um I might not be in a good position here you know with this knight with his rook x-ray through hmm so I'm still contemplating that knight attacking the queen bishop doesn't have to take that's the thing he could go anywhere couldn't he but if he, if he did then the queen takes It's pushing down, it's pushing down. This is all distraction stuff. I think I need to be just bringing this. Say the bishop does take. Then we take. We're on his rook. Doesn't have to take with the rook. He could do something with the queen, couldn't he? Mm. Well, say the rook takes. He's still got the pawn though, hasn't he? After all of that, he's still got the pawn. Uh, yeah, that's a bit messy. It's getting messier. I'm going to have to push here and... Uh... Okay, let's push this pawn up. He's still got this pawn, so I don't know what I'm doing here. Hmm. Oh, he's got my queen. Oh. Right, right. So it's all messed up now. After all that messing about with the pawn. Hmm. Is there any fanciness here? Knight comes up. Rook takes. No, that's not good. That's not good. Ah, oh, man. Let's just do this. Probably should have just done it earlier and maybe allowed him to just take that pawn here. It's all a bit scratchy now. Damn. Do you know what I missed? Oh my gosh. I can't believe I missed this. I can't believe I missed it. McQueen could have just taken his rook. Oh my gosh. I could have just taken his rook with the queen. Although no, he, then his rook would be taking the knight here. Okay, well it's a downhill slide now. Queen's just taken the rook. He's going for some fancy business. So we can put a check on there and a checkmate type thing. Well, that was a bit of a stinker, wasn't it? Wow, overthinking big style on that. But what the position was okay was based on what the opponent was going to do. Let me just have a look at this here. I spent too much time. I'm going to do like a, what is it, game review thing. Eighty-two percent opponent was sixty-eight point five. Um, how do you get the analysis thing on there? Okay, quick shifty. Let's see what went on. Okay, so we had the explanations about all this type of opening here, and yep, yeah, so actually saying better taking with the knight i don't feel comfortable taking with the knight i just like to get my pieces out there at this you know in this sort of position and then like we said they're captured and then they're moving the bishop so again i felt that was a slight loss in dynamic uh, tempo for them and we decided to come attack 
Oh, we've got a little bit of a tick for that. Okay, that's fine. And that's what I'm used to doing in those types of situations. And it's got a is that best move thing there for them. So we catch it. So then they push this pawn down and we felt like putting smaller smaller piece putting pressure onto a higher piece usually isn't wrong and captured so that seems okay I don't think it likes the my pawn move it doesn't like my pawn move it's saying I should have moved this pawn this this pawn was the one I was overthinking about because I was babysitting this pawn wasn't I this pawn that they're highlighting here so that's probably what they're trying to tell me but I think in essence because I like this type of move I feel comfortable with this type of move it's not a major problem for me uh, it did dip a little bit on the gauge bar um, can't see it on the screen but uh, did dip a bit so it might be something to add in and probably do this pawn move later because nobody, nothing's threatening the pawn at the minute. You know, no, nobody's threatening this pawn. So maybe I could have done that move first, just to release the pressure from the rook. And then, if somebody then decides to come and challenge it, then we can bring the pawn up. So I've been a bit too previous with the pawn move there, I think. So that's something to learn. Okay, so we went up, and they pushed down. They got a bit of a blunder mark as well and now we wanted to challenge we've got a tick there because this pawn here like we said whatever comes to actually attack it we're just going to own that key square for us so they captured okay so everything seems fine and we captured with the knight and then it kind of dawned on us that we do he does have an extra way through with his rook but we did say that we we're going to support with the rook so it all to me it all looks fair the gauge bar is on black side at the minute so that's a plus and that's an error oh it's a massive error oh my gosh the gauge bar has gone right up for black it's absolutely out and out winning I don't think I took advantage of that whatever the I can't take it can I is there a fork on it what's what's the deal yeah no I didn't take advantage didn't dip that far down but it's still up a blunderous thing it's saying it's oh the move that we were talking about we deliberated about it for ages didn't we bringing the knight around and attacking the queen smaller piece attacking a higher piece looking for him potentially coming and taking our queen whichever way around we would still have a check on his king when we took his queen oh we should have just gone for it our gut was saying that was right but we're so bent out of shape losing this pawn here whoa dear ah, i love chess <laughs> oh dear right so they pushed down with another blunderous move we did feel something wasn't right but we didn't take full advantage again the gauge bars went high up when they did that now it's dropped down a little bit more for black but we're still winning in terms of the gauge bar which is unusual for us and then they come down with this i mean uh, this rook move here and the gauge bar's gone crazy for black again uh, taking taking the rook it's a higher piece isn't it it's a higher piece so even if he took with his rook yeah we should have just taken the rook with the queen i think i bet that's what it's going to show yeah it's showing that that's okay though the night move and the gauge bar is really high up for black so in essence yeah i had options of being able to take the rook as well but this is favorable the night move so i'm not going to get too twisted about that it's just that i didn't see that until after they'd moved it the rook so i need to really be seeing that sort of stuff and then the queen takes the rook looking all champion type thing i don't know it was a bit weird seeing that it was a bit weird seeing that i was really kind of expecting him to do that this 
But if he does that, I get a check on his king anyway, don't I? So I win either rook. Yeah, because I would be able to just do that with a check, but the gauge bar has come down a little bit. So it's not showing a win win. And then he'll come for us here. And then. There's no more checks on the king, is there? So we take the rook. So black is still winning. And then obviously the king would take here. And we could then put a check on the king. No, we couldn't because the bishop is there. And what do we do about this rook? Nothing. Hmm, interesting. Well, we're up the exchange. So something would have happened there, wouldn't it? Interesting. Yeah, but that queen move was a little bit strange. Capture in there. And it's a good job we had the sight to actually see that we could just take the rook and get a checkmate, basically. So that's pretty interesting. So that was a nice long play game. A um, little bit quirky in the middle bits there. But I think the key thing from out of all the games that I do play is not to beat myself up when I'm actually in there. Um, because I am finding good advantageous positions the majority of the time it's just then just fine-tuning the observation on the board and then just making that correct move a little bit of a tweak especially for my longer games the short game I can't really do too much about that it's just the speed thing just move 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 um, and like I say those are just training things for training different aspects of the brain but the longer play games are the key ones like this here and if I feel like I'm losing, then I'm doing something wrong and I need to change and just reevaluate what's actually happening on the board. This is a good lesson. Yeah, focusing on something that didn't need to be focused on, you know, the pawn, supporting the pawn. Um, when I'm in an advantageous position, just take advantage of that.